It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hey there, this is Eric for Entomology Animated, and uh, just continuing with my rainbow scarab beetle project, sculpting project, and this is the head up to this point. So I've done some detailing on it, and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the techniques that I used do a little touch up here and there, but for the most part, I'm declaring the head good enough for now so I can move on to other parts of the model. As you can see, I have details on all these various parts. And eventually they'll even be hair and color and that kind of good stuff. Before I get into discussing how I sculpted these details, I wanted to make a couple quick points. Whenever you're modeling anything, whether it's an animal or a spaceship, or a rusty mailbox or a blade of grass, it's always good to have an understanding of what material you're trying to emulate in ZBrush. And I'm not just talking about in terms of color and reflectivity, I'm talking about the actual details themselves. How does detail like this come about in nature? You know, answering, you know, why there's particular pitting on this horn as opposed to sort of this bumpy surface down here, that's a bit more of a difficult question to answer because there is most likely a combination of physiological and evolutionary um, explanations behind this sort of complex structures along with the fact that we might just not know. But we do know what the creature is made out of. We know what this substance is, the chemistry of it, and so on. It's basically a material called chitin combined with a sclerotin in some cases. And uh, these are polysaccharides that are secreted by cells, so they're a product of cell biology. Uh, before I get deep into the chemistry, or rather than hearing me get in deep into the, the chemistry of this stuff, which is a little bit out of my uh, area of expertise, I'm going to refer you to somebody who could do a much better job explaining it than I can, and that is Nancy Mirelli, and she has her own YouTube channel called Cybugs. Uh, it's a great channel and she explains a lot of cool aspects of insect physiology. You might recognize this video that she created that I featured in an earlier video of mine when I was talking about uh, beetle eyes and that kind of thing, so I have that going on in the background. Uh, but she does some really great stuff and her YouTube channel is really worth watching, especially if you're a creature designer and you're trying to create novel materials for, you know, some distant planet or something like that. Your material is going to be much more believable if you understand something about the materials that insects on Earth use. She has a chapter, uh, or a video rather, that explains exoskeletons, chitin, and sclerotin, and she does a great job of it. And if you can see, here's the star of our show. She just happens to have a picture of it up here. So this is a great video. I highly recommend it. Check it out. It's only about nine minutes long. You can learn lots of cool stuff, and you'll be better prepared for imitating insect bodies if you understand the chemistry behind the materials that make them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how I detailed this surface. Okay, so let's go back to an earlier version of the model that had sort of this level of detail. And if you remember at the end of the previous uh, video, I created a custom brush which I called Beetle Dots, which is basically uses a custom alpha drag dot and essentially the dam standard or Damien standard brush. And uh, I just kind of started, that's a little bit too big, sort of drawing out these dots here, like this, using symmetry on these outer parts, just to save some time. And I went and I covered the entire horn with this, like this kind of thing. Then for the middle part, I turned off symmetry, it's the X hotkey, and I went in and kind of drew out dots in the middle, and you can sort of see that it's asymmetrical enough, so uh, it looks fairly natural. It doesn't look completely symmetrical unless you look really closely. Um, so I did that for the entire horn, and then the next thing I did is I used the mask lasso brush. I'm going to hold the control key, pull up mask lasso, and draw a mask around the horn, like this. See, I've subdivided the model. It's like nine million polygons, which is pretty good for detailing the head. Um, so uh, let me just 
quickly switch to mask pen, control and alt at the same time to erase the mask, and just clean it up, you get the idea, that simple. Then I inverted the mask so that just the horn is exposed. The control click on it to blur the mask a little bit. And then I went into the surface uh, sub palette, which is in the tool palette, and turn on noise. This brings up this kind of weird sort of mini interface here. Let's see if we get the horn visible. There it is, it's upside down. Let's do this. Let's do frame. There we go. And then zoom in. Okay. So, um, this menu allows you to create a procedural noise. So I just kind of messed around with this graph here until I got something that looked kind of like what I was going for. Just I want to create a small level of detail that's kind of layered on top of those dots there. So um, lower the scale a little bit. So it's going to be like fine detail. Choose OK. And then uh, apply to mesh. So if I hit apply to mesh, that bakes that noise into the surface and it's only in the masked parts. You probably do it again just to add a little bit more strength to it. So I'll choose apply to mesh. So that's one way you can get some nice detail. Clear the graph, uh, clear the mask, and you can see that that noise is only on the uh, unmasked portions there. Don't worry. Okay, the next thing I did after doing that was I wanted to kind of tighten up this this sort of lumpy squiggly detail that we see right here. So let's take a look at a reference just so you know that I'm not making this stuff up. This is actually what it looks like. So, you know, just looking at it for a while, it looks like kind of long, sort of like a long lumpy line pattern with a few dots thrown in here and there and some indentations. That's kind of the basic pattern here. So it's a really interesting pattern. So I just uh, took the inflate brush and kind of tightened up the stuff that I had done before. So I kind of laid this detail down earlier just as kind of a placeholder. So now I'm just, you know, getting the inflate brush, maybe lowering the focal, shift a little bit, and the draw size. Let me get down to a little bit. Yeah, something like this. So this took a while, but I came in here and just started to kind of tighten this up a little bit and really make it look natural. You know, for some things, I'm, I definitely, if I really want a natural look, I will definitely take the time to do it by hand rather than using a procedural method if I think that's going to give me a much more organic kind of look to the final result. Uh, because if you use too many, you know, procedural stuff, things like noise and that kind of thing, it just starts to look very CG and you lose that sort of illusion of reality. This could probably be a little bit higher intensity. So I went in here and I just did that for the whole surface. For these parts right here near the eye, I turned on the symmetry just to save a little bit of time. Take a look at the finished version. Now I did make some changes to this area in the finished version so you can see that I went back and looked at my reference and this area is a bit more complex than I originally um, saw. Sometimes it does take a while to see these things and you really have to look closely and then you have to convince yourself that it's actually worth taking the time to fix. Um, still, I think it's closer to the right forms, but unlike, you know, when you're sculpting a human, we look at humans pretty much all day long, most of us do, in some form or another. So even though making a human is very difficult, we do have a mental library of the way that things should work. Insects, there's no formula that you can follow. They vary wildly, even between closely related species. So you can't just say, okay, here's a formula for sculpting an insect head, and I'm just going to follow that every time. The best you can get is certain similarities in forms. And even that, you know, um, that's only within certain orders and certain uh, genuses of uh, insects. And certainly it's not something you can hold for all of them, except for the basics, which is like a bilateral symmetry, uh, six legs, segmented bodies, three main segments, and that kind of thing. So things that define insecta as a whole, you can go by that. But after that, there's no formula you can apply. You can't just say, hey, I just need to have you know, these angles right here, and all my insects will look good. 
insects are just too wacky and that is why I love sculpting them. Okay, some other techniques that I used. Um, we can actually do it on this version, it doesn't matter. Um, I love the surface noise feature of ZBrush. I use it all the time and I use it lots of different ways. So there's the obvious way that I just showed where I just kind of designed a noise and then said, okay, um, apply to mesh. But you can also do this where I'm gonna put noise over the entire surface. Let's go back into the edit menu here and maybe I'll change the scale just to make it a little bit varied. Something like this, something like this. Let's move it over here so you can see. So that's what the noise looks like. But I don't know if I want to have it over the entire surface. So I'll choose OK. At the moment, this means it's essentially projected onto the surface like a bump map. It's not baked into the surface yet. If I choose apply to mesh, it will bake it into the surface. I can also choose mask by noise. And you can see that converts the noise into a mask. Now if I hide the mask, control H, and choose something like, uh, let's say, the clay brush. I can go in here and just selectively add that noise in because I'm using mask rather than just applying it to the whole surface. But I like using the brush to put it in very specific places so that it doesn't look too uniform. So that's another way you can use surface noise. And I'll put that in selectively, like in these ridges and these other otherwise smooth parts. Another place I like to use it on the, on the um, mouth parts. This part which is mostly smooth but has a little bit of surface perturbation on it. So I did the same thing there. I created a noise mask and kind of sculpted on top of it and some of these other parts. Another way you can go about doing this is to include the mask, choose the noise brush. That's this one right here, which also allows you to paint in noise selectively. So this is just really comes down to what you like, which method you like better. Um, it's really up to you. They kind of do very similar things, but you can see I'm kind of sculpting in some noise here. I'm going to increase the Z intensity so it's a little bit more obvious. And let's say I want to edit this noise. In this case, I'll go into the brush. Uh, palette and then go under surface and choose edit and then I have a noise here so let's change the scale let's bring the strength down a little bit Play with this say okay and now it allows me to kind of sculpt in that noise selectively so just another way to kind of add a little bit of surface sort of damage and that kind of thing I might uh, Hold the shift key and do a little bit of smoothing here so it's not overdone. And also the uh, H polish brush, go in here and kind of knock it down just a little bit, just so it's not so in your face. Because I don't want it to distract or overpower the other detail, which is really creates the character of the beetle. So that's another way that I go about uh, doing this. And uh, I did that for these pieces. I went back and looked at my reference, made sure that these parts were close to the reference, so they had some changes there. Um, and then I looked at the microscope to get an idea of, of this kind of detail right here. So kind of did a combination of a bunch of different um, techniques to kind of create this kind of surface detail. And this is gonna be covered with hair as well. And then finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is the eyes. I go into this in much more detail on my Nomen uh, video, the uh, hyper-realistic insect design video that's available on Nomen Workshop. Of course, I'm going to plug that here. But the way that I did this for the eye, and I'll click on this and switch to this, is I used noise. So I used noise. I go in here and edit, and then choose the noise plug. So the noise plug, I'll choose edit. This brings up yet another interface, and I chose the hex tile. And I use that as a way to create this hexagon pattern that you see the created by the lenses of the eye. So, um, but for more information on how to work with that feature, check out my hyper-realistic insect design available on the Gnome Workshop. And I think that covers it for this chapter. In the next chapter, I'm going to move on to working on parts of the body. So that's coming up next.